So originally, um, when you attacked Skinner's behaviorist model of language acquisition, you did it on the basis that the poverty of stimulus required that we had some prior faculty in our mind that allowed us to learn language from limited examples. Do you think there's a similar argument or account of a common human morality can be given? And do you have such an account or do you have an idea of what such an account would look like? Just to uh, respond, if, if you look at that, as far as the review of Skinner was concerned, uh, almost 95% of it was just running through claims that he was making and arguing that these are totally absurd based on nothing. I mean, I did at the very end of the review say, look, there's another way of looking at this, which comes out of mainstream biology. Uh, mainstream biology just takes for granted that every capacity, you know, your visual system, your ability to walk, uh, whatever it may be, is based on some genetic uh, property. I mean, that's not even discussed. And that's in linguistics, it happens to be called poverty of stimulus, but it's universal. Uh, what it means is that the kind of creature you are is not determined by the inputs. Like you can't change a human embryo into a, a cat embryo by changing around the nutrition in the, in the uh, uterus. You know, it's going to become a human being. You know, that's because it's built that way. Uh, that's just a biological truism. And it's presumably no reason to doubt that it's also true of language. I think it is. Uh, what about morality? Well, I think it's the same thing. Actually, that was pointed out by David Hume. He's, he is, you know, the leading empiricist, but there's a lot of confusion about what empiricism is. The empiricists like Locke and Hume and others, uh, contrary to illusions, they believed in innate structure. And the reason is they were not idiots. I mean, of course, everything that happens comes out of innate, in a large part, out of innate structure. Well, what about morality? Uh, Hume couldn't give much of a proof, but he said, uh, he just made some observations, which are correct. He said, uh, look, we're constantly making moral decisions in new situations, and they're pretty consistent, and other people pretty much comprehend them and so on. Well, if we're doing that, it must be that we have some principles that are lying behind it. And the principles can't be picked up by induction. In fact, in, fact, in his view, nothing can. It's all what he called animal instinct. It's coming from animal instinct. That's what's now called genetic endowment. So genetic endowment is determining our capacity to gain knowledge, understanding, develop moral principles, and so on and so forth. And I think that's probably, I don't see how that can be false. Well, the next problem is to try to go on and find out what they are. Uh, well, there's plenty of work on that. That's in fact a large part of the content of the classical moral philosophy. And it's picked up again in modern work. For example, uh, John Rawls's famous theory of justice, probably the most influential uh, uh, work in political science, you know, political philosophy in the last century. He, uh, that's what he does. In fact, he picks a linguistic model, if you look. He says, it's, our concept of justice, that part of morality, has to be just like our acquisition of language. And then he discusses parallels. And based, then he tries to show what the, the principles would be, you know, kind of original condition type thing, what, what they would be. All right, you can say he got it right or he got it wrong, but that's the program. And I don't see what other program there could be. Now, there is more contemporary work, recent work uh, proceeding further with this. There's even empirical studies by now of uh, uh, children's moral judgment, uh, comparative moral judgments in different societies, and uh, uh, some theoretical structure about uh, what might lie behind them. Well, yeah, that's uh, empirical inquiry into the nature of, uh, into what our moral nature is. But that it must be there, I think, is pretty obvious, even from Hume's comments.